So welcome to our, in case you missed it, a reintroduction to Copilot for Microsoft 365. My name is Brian Matthews. I'm the head of uh, services strategy and development at CDW Canada for Digital Workspace and really excited to kick off the session today. We've brought in thought leaders from across CDW's team and across Microsoft to really showcase the strength of our partnership and hopefully give you, uh, as the title uh, clearly states, a, a reintroduction to Copilot. So we've got some demos that we're going to do. We're going to talk at a high level about Copilot and we will dig in a little bit on the security side of things as most of our customers uh, have lots of concerns and are, are looking for CDW's thought leadership from that perspective. So uh, with that being said, uh, our, our speakers today are Shaheb, uh, myself, Micah from Microsoft, and Shoaib. Uh, I'll let them give a, a full introduction on what we're seeing. Uh, but before I pass it over to Shahab, I would just say, again, thank you for attending today. Uh, CDW is very, very excited about Copilot for Microsoft 365. Uh, this may be your first time attending one of our Copilot sessions, or you may have seen some of the things that we've been doing uh, out in market. So we've had you know, customer events in market across the country uh, in May. We've done a number of different webinars. Uh, we've got some great services offerings that we're going to talk about. But the, the real message is if there's anything that we can do to help you or your organization uh, get ready for Copilot, uh, do end user training, adoption, uh, we are absolutely eager and excited to connect with you. So with that, I will pass it over to Shaheb, our, uh, our fine Copilot solutioner architect out in Calgary. Jeb? Hey, I'm actually going to kick things off, but um, thank you very much, Brian. It is super, super excited to be here today with the CW team um, and with all of you. Um, this is a pretty exciting moment at Microsoft, at CDW, and really across the, the entire industry right now. Um, it's an exciting moment for, for a couple different reasons. Um, and I personally knew something was different when my sister reached out to me a couple months back asking how she could get early access to Copilot for Microsoft 365. That That's when you really know something, um, something is different. Um, well, it may seem as if we're entering a completely new era of AI, um, this work has been ongoing for quite a while, both within Microsoft um, and across the tech space um, since the early 1950s. Um, and as we transition to this next era of generative AI, um, where we are right now. So as you probably have all seen, technology is, is advancing incredibly quickly um, and it's grabbing headlines every single day. Experiences based on large language models like GPT-4 have taken the world completely by storm. Um, and we've seen this technology break through not only with consumers, um, but it's also breaking through with tech and, and other corporations. Um, it took GPT, ChatGPT, just two months to reach 100 million users, making it the fastest adopted consumer application in history. Even my 95 year old grandfather is using ChatGPT. Uh, no joke. <laughs> Um, and that that's just a testament to the wide reach of generative AI in today's society. And what we're seeing now is employees are starting to demand these same kinds of experiences and the tools they use every single day. Similarly, your customers are quickly coming to expect AI capabilities in the services that you offer. At Microsoft, we're moving from information at your fingertips to expertise at your fingertips. And that's ultimately the opportunity in front of all of us today. And CDW has an awesome technical team across the country from coast to coast um, to ensure that we can do that responsibly, compliantly, um, and as we're gonna to speak to later on, the, later on in the presentation, securely. So whether you're interested in exploring Microsoft Copilot or bringing your own AI, own AI capabilities, leveraging the Microsoft Cloud or both, um, there's a number of tools available to support. So if you want to unlock individual productivity for your entire organization, you can start with Microsoft Copilot on the web. If you're already using Copilot for Microsoft 365 and want to fine tune, extend, or even customize your Copilot experience, we have Copilot Studio. And if you're wanting to infuse AI into existing experiences or applications that your organization uses, we can help you plan and architect that roadmap out as well. But today we're really gonna be focusing on Copilot 
for Microsoft 365, which is that middle box. With Copilot for Microsoft 365, you have a powerful AI assistant for work that seamlessly integrates into all of your organizational data across various devices. It harnesses the capability of the latest large language models like GPT-4 Turbo, and even combines that information with data from the web, your Microsoft Graph, and applications that you're likely already using in your day-to-day, -day, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and Teams. It even has the ability to incorporate data from over a thousand plugins like Adobe SAP and Workspace using Copilot Studio. As CW demonstrates shortly in a live demonstration, Copilot for M365 is integrated into the productivity apps that you're using today. You can summarize an email chain in Outlook, you can analyze data or build graphs directly within Excel, and you can create a Word document or a PowerPoint at the click of a button. And all of this is done through natural language. Copilot for M365 is built on Microsoft's comprehensive approach to security, compliance, privacy, and responsible AI. Microsoft 365 Copilot is integrated into M365 and adheres to all of your existing privacy and compliance policies. M365 Copilot provides value by connecting that large language model to your organizational data. When you enter prompts using Copilot, the information contained within your prompt, the data that it retrieves, and the response that's generated all remain within your M365 service boundary in keeping with all of your current privacy and security policies. An important distinction to highlight is that Copilot for M365 uses Azure Open, OpenAI services for processing, not OpenAI's publicly available services. And all of your prompts, your responses, and the data accessed through the Microsoft Graph are never actually used to train the large language model. And that's a really key difference I want to highlight between Copilot and the public version of ChatGPT, which you've likely all used. You control your data, and Microsoft doesn't leverage that data to train the large language model. So I mentioned the broad adoption of ChatGPT earlier on in this presentation. The reality is employees are using these tools today, and in some cases they may be co copying confidential data into these publicly available tools. Copilot provides a commercial ready platform to ensure organizational data remains secure, but also providing employees with access to the latest generative AI capabilities in the market. We've come a long way over the past year. There are literally announcements every single week. Um, and prior to public availability of Copilot for M365, um, as part of our early access program, Microsoft worked with a close group um, of customers, commercial and public sector around the world to really learn how they're using Copilot. Um, we took their feedback, we iterated, and we continue to improve the experience. And what we've learned is early adopters overwhelmingly said they would choose Copilot over a free lunch, um, and how they worked has dramatically changed. They're able to spend more time on higher value tasks and less time on low value tasks like summarizing a long email chain or even creating meeting notes. At Microsoft, we measure productivity gains across workflow, not just applications. Um, utilization of an application like Word or Teams or Excel, that ultimately changes depending on the role and the individual. But the general workflow like effective meetings or data analysis or content creation or email processing, that's shared across the entire organization. So effective meetings, you can save time by catching, uh, by quickly catching up on missed meetings, summarizing next steps, um, analyzing data, using Copilot to gather insights um, and build graphs, content creation, um, or even email processing to summarize email threads and draft responses using your tone. At a functional level, um, Copilot helps with a bunch of common tasks. So if you're an HR, Copilot can help draft job descriptions, create policies, 
and even training material. If you're in sales, Copilot can create meeting agendas, summarize calls, and build entire presentations. This slide was even built using Microsoft Copilot um, and then edited later by me to create the final version. And lastly, if you're in finance, um, you can use Copilot to help analyze data and generate professional charts. Um, so I've always struggled at Excel, remembering formulas, creating pivot tables has never been a strength. And now I'm able to tell, exact, tell Excel exactly what I want to do. Um, and it will recommend the correct formula. It's like my personal Excel assistant whenever I need it. I mentioned my sister at the beginning of the presentation. When Microsoft first announced Copilot for M365, she was one of the first people to reach out to me. And as a lawyer, she's constantly reading documents, identifying critical information, and summarizing that information. Copilot is a game changer for someone like her. Having the ability to summarize a legal document, identify key information, and create content based on that information can save her hours and ultimately allow her to spend that time on high value activities um, and be more effective. That's a great example of how Copilot provides expertise at your fingertips, not just information. Uh, I'm now going to pass it off to Shahab um, to share screen and do, a, do some live demos. Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Shahab. I have uh, about 17 years of experience um, in the industry. Um, the, the pepper in my black and pepper in my beard kind of testifies to that. Um, I'll be talking about prompts um, and then kind of going through a live demo uh, in, in a little while. So let's maybe quickly jump into it. So what is a prompt? Um, a prompt at its base is any question, any instruction that you use to interact with Copilot. Um, and it is slightly different in terms of how we have traditionally in the past interacted with search engines. Um, two key differences there. So first and foremost, uh, with search engines, we normally use keywords, right? So, so if we say something like how to book time off versus how to take a holiday, um, search engines would provide us two very different responses based on those keywords, even though the intent is the same. Um, the second piece is that search engines, till quite recently, would just show you a, a series of results and ask you to pick out the one that you actually needed to uh, need it uh, based on the information that you requested or actually go through a bunch of them to figure out where you need to go. Uh, with bots, with Copilot, um, we're kind of surpassing both of those elements because now not only do you not need to know the, exa the exact keyword for the information that you need, uh, but also that information is distilled and presented to you in a form that is consumable. Um, so it has slightly changed in, in terms of how we've kind of worked in the past. Um, talking about prompts, there are, I would say, five, maybe six elements that are key um, that work together to make an awesome prompt. Um, first is that goal piece, right? So you want to set out in terms of what you want um, from Copilot. You want to set a context to it, and this is like any conversation that we have with a friend. Copilot is, is that conversation is very similar to how you would talk to a friend in, in terms of um, Adding context avoids uh, miscommunications, misunderstandings. Um, and, and then you want to kind of provide a source to Copilot in terms of what that, that piece is where, where Copilot is kind of getting limited by. Um, and finally, you want that expectations piece. How, do, how does Copilot respond back to you in, in terms of that, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into a, a, a live uh, environment. So this is effectively my environment. As everyone knows, um, doing live demos is fraught with danger, but we're going to give it a shot and uh, hopefully works out. So I am currently in Microsoft Word. There are quite a few applications where you can uh, integrate with Copilot, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start off with Microsoft Word. Uh, and what we are doing is what is effectively known as a create prompt. Now, we just talked about that goal piece, the expectations piece, the source piece, the context piece. And what you'll see here is that it has all of those elements as I kind of work through it, right? Uh, one more uh, 
piece that I that I kind of want to talk about is um, the more specific you are in your prompt, the better it is, the more likely you are to get the result, results that you need. Having said that, for the same prompt, um, just as, as as if you were talking to a friend, you may get different results, right? So we're going to go ahead and get started on it. Now, again, because of the paucity of time, we're not going to go through a bunch of different prompts. But if you do want to see what other prompts are available for a particular uh, document that you have or particular application in case of Word, this would be a good source to kind of go through that, right? Now, we've kind of asked it, uh, and I'm I'm expecting a lot of folks uh, on the call are IT wardens of sort. So if you're trying to figure out where do you get that conversation started with your execs, that's one of those pieces where you can kind of uh, go through, right? And and again, this is fairly small. What we've done is we've asked for Copilot from Microsoft 365 a quick feasibility study, right? So kind of pulled out the pros and the cons, and then it's kind of pulled pulled together a conclusion. Now I'm going to keep it for now, um, and I'm going to kind of. Uh, Taking take that example that Mika was talking about uh, about his lawyer sister. I, I do know that now I need to be a bit more careful around Mika. Um, if I want to kind of scan for some sets of information around it, so I can kind of ask explicitly if there is a call to action in this piece. Um, and uh, Copilot not only kind of goes through that document that is just created, but then is also able to, if there is explicit call to action, provide a reference to me to say, okay, yeah, this is where it is, right? Um, so because obviously we're presenting and we're going to a wider audience, it's going to take slightly longer than it should. Right? So it kind of goes through that. Yep, there's a call to action. It kind of provides what that call to action is. Um, it it provides more information around that. Now I can, if I want, kind of go ahead and keep working on this. Or my other option is to kind of include some documentations to it. So you can reference a file. Now what you will see here is when I try to kind of re-reference a file, and go down there. If I try to reference a file here, my options are Word documents, um, or even if I try to do that within um, within the body of the piece, it's primarily PowerPoint and Word, right? So uh, Copilot for Word doesn't at this point in time support any other uh, file formats if you want to make reference to it. What we're going to try to do now is we're going to try to come into, so this is your copilot.microsoft.com. Obviously, I'm a licensed user, so you'll see that. You do have that tabs in terms of work and web where you can uh, create, um, where, where they kind of go out to different sources on the web. And what I'm going to use is a PDF document. So PDF document is not something that is acceptable uh, to Copilot in Word. It, at this point in time, has absolutely no mention of Copilot. If I do the search very quickly, you'll see that it doesn't have that, but I want to integrate this back into my document. So what I'm going to ask is create a detailed summary and, and you could, you know, uh, you could put in a flavor if you wanted based on uh, whatever is, whatever is required. So if you wanted it to be um, hip, for example, it will go ahead um, be hipster if you wanted that. If you wanted to some particular flavor of it, it'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to let it go ahead and complete that. I'm going to go switch back into Microsoft Word so as it kind of pulls this through. I just want to make sure it does that and I can show you guys that before I switch back. So now what's effectively it's doing is it's it's gone into my PDF document, pulled that information out, created this piece. Now I could take that and paste it into Word, which I've already done now, um, just in the interest of time. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Copilot to add a section on uh, Copilot acceptable use policy using the Word summary for that document that I created to that as a I'm going to go ahead and try to see if it can take what's in this document 
um, and apply that to the third party PDF document, uh, to that third party word summary of that PDF document, distill it together and kind of bring it back into a form that is actually consumable. And so now it's taken all of those pieces in terms of uh, those copyright information, acceptable use information, all of those pieces, and it's kind of writing it out based on that. It's going to let it work it through. And it will uh, carry that same tone that was used earlier. It will use that same language that was used earlier. It understands what the function is. It's kind of flowing through based on that. Now I'm for just in the interest of time, I'm going to keep it, save it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I am now going to switch into PowerPoint. Now this again, so it's, it's always easy. It's fairly straightforward from a copilot perspective to generate a presentation, but I just don't want it to generate any presentation. I wanted to generate the presentation based on the document that I've just created. So I want to take that Word document and now transpose it into PowerPoint. If it's something that we do all the time, it's something that is always extremely painful. So I'm going to ask it to create a presentation from file. I'm going to see if it kind of picks that up straight out. Um, it does tend to have, um, like I would say, a fairly recency bias. So it will kind of pull that through quicker than other documents, but I'm going to just in case it doesn't sync in time, we can always use one of the earlier versions of this document, right? Now this might take a little bit of time because uh, that earlier document was a little bit bigger. We'll see where, what it kind of comes back with. Uh, it is asking me if it can go ahead and overwrite this file because now when it kind of creates those slides, it will overwrite this existing one. And, uh, and just like we kind of interact uh, with with our uh, software Copilot is kind of doing the same thing, right? So we would create maybe an outline and kind of then break that up. This is, seems a bit fairly large, but let's see if it pulls that through. Um, just like what you saw with Word, you do have that option of figuring out what the other prompts are. So you can always kind of go through that. Now, as let me actually do this. So as we're kind of pulling this through while it's kind of working in the. I think it's almost done otherwise. So it's kind of gone ahead now and pulled that presentation for me. It's put in an agenda slide. It's followed that formatting all the way through. It's put in images. Now these images, uh, you can use this presentation as it stands because uh, Microsoft takes responsibility for all copyright. Uh, issues around that, so it, so you can definitely use that. It also puts in the speaker notes as as part of this, right? So all of these pieces are right there. You can now go ahead and add or edit this presentation either through that designer piece or also just kind of this, right? So you could say something like, let's say, if I was in here, um, or you could just do that for a particular slide, right? So it will go ahead and try to kind of work things around that. An agenda slide, so it might, yeah. So, so it'll kind of go ahead and try to do that as, as quickly as possible, and you could either keep it or kind of go back to it, right? I am now kind of gonna dive back quickly into our discussion. Um, and uh, yeah, 
I'm just going to go to. Yep, so so we just take control. Then yep, so right here. OK. Uh, you're seeing my. Brian, are they seeing my uh, notes version or are they seeing the full? Nope, full it looks screen? good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Run awesome. Your save your input slide. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so just some quick elements in terms of in terms of you working with Copilot. So because of some of those data and privacy concerns that Micah talked about at the start of the presentation, um, Copilot isn't saving any of your prompts. Any information that you provide to Copilot is not not saved uh, to train the LLM. Um, so what that will mean is that you will lose your chart if you select the new topic button, if you close the browser window, if you step away for a little while. So if you do have a prompt that has worked really, really well for you, um, I would say save it, put it somewhere else, share it uh, around your other Copilot uh, users within your organization. Um, the other piece that I keep saying is that this is a very different experience from what we've traditionally associated technology with, where it has to be very predictable in terms of how we work with this. Uh, Copilot uh, will give you different responses uh, based on how you ask, when you ask, what you ask, right? So even for the same prompt, you might get a slightly different answer. Uh, the other piece, if you're kind of just starting off, because again, like I said, we, we had very little time today, but what we've done is we've kind of done that drafting piece and creating piece. We've taken that transform piece where we've taken something that was uh, written for a particular purpose and repurposed it. We've done, we've taken that and then created a presentation out of it and, and edited that. Uh, and we've also done that understand piece and asking piece, right? Where we're looking at a big document and we're trying to understand if had has those particular elements. Of course, that's that's I would say a drop in the ocean in terms of its functionality. But if you want to start off with Copilot, if you're a new user, here are some of those ideas where you can kind of um, get started. There is a lot coming um, around Copilot. Uh, I, I I think uh, there are two pieces to note here for Copilot. Uh, Microsoft doing a really good job in terms of. Uh, channeling feedback. So if you would have seen any of those prompts, that thumbs up, thumbs down, team, it, I get prompted a lot in terms of uh, in, in terms of what my experience is with Copilot, and, and, and a lot of that that feedback is getting channeled into the new feature sets. And then there's a lot of new feature sets that are coming uh, down your uh, coming down the pipe all the time. So um, I, I would say the time is right in in terms of now experimenting with it and and kind of using it as part of your organizational piece. Uh, with that, I am going to um, hand over control to uh, a younger and more better looking colleague of mine, uh, and, and then I, he'll maybe uh, talk you talk you through the security piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Shahab. Uh, great interactive demo on Copilot and how it can enhance your productivity with day to day. Um, so firstly, I would like to thank every one of you for joining us here and giving us your time and uh, for the co-pilot webinar with CDW. Uh, now, my name is Shoaib Mawani. I've been with CDW for approximately five years now, and I've been in the Microsoft space for about 10 years. My role at CDW is to help our clients with their digital transformation journey through Microsoft 365 and Copilot. And today, my presentation outlines the key strategies and Microsoft tools for maintaining security and compliance when using Copilot or Microsoft 365. I will also be touching on some of our offerings around Copilot towards the end, end of my uh, part of the presentation. So we'll go through that as well. Now, as you may know, the integration of Copilot uh, into Microsoft 365 offers numerous benefits for productivity and collaboration. However, ensuring security and compliance is crucial to mitigating risks associated with device management, user access, data protection, and the use of unsafe third-party AI applications. Now, when we talk about security and compliance controls for Copilot, I like to think of them as four pillars of security and compliance, out of which the first one is, and the most important one is mentioned here, uh, Microsoft Entra ID, 
also known as uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory, also known as Microsoft Identity and Access Management. Uh, right, leave it up to Microsoft for their naming conventions. Um, now, there are multiple ways you can get started with Enter ID. These are for the first initial uh, little things that we have to work with when we're starting off with Microsoft 365, when we're trying to explore Copilot a little bit more. Right, If you have an on-premises Active Directory, you could be either hybrid joined uh, to pass through authentication or password hash sync, right? Or you could be fully cloud, AD joined, your users could be cloud-based, or you could even have an ADFS deployed on-prem, all of which has its own advantages, right? Based on your organization needs and the way you decide to connect to Entra ID um, can give you access to multiple different features, right? So, and this is crucial for Copilot and understanding how Copilot and security and identity and access management work with Copilot, right? Some of the features that EntraID provides is conditional access, multi-factor authentication, single sign-on with other third-party applications, right? Risky user sign-in detection, that's an important one. PIM, privileged identity management, and RBAC, right? Role-based access, all of which are important components to govern access to Copilot as well as your corporate data, right? So let's take a quick example over here, the risky user sign-in detection, right? Let's say you guys have rolled out uh, co-pilot in your environment, and, but haven't put certain uh, permissions in place so users can kind of go through co-pilot and search for anything in your environment. Now, if a user's, um, if let's say a user is detected with incorrect password attempts, they're trying to make 10 or 15 password attempts, and all of them have been incorrect, right? This is where it could be potentially a loop, right? The user's credentials could have been exposed, someone's trying to log in, uh, to the, use those user credentials to log in. And if they get a hand of Copilot, they could actually search through your entire Microsoft data estate for any kind of information or sensitive information within your MC65 tenant, right? So Entra ID can help trigger conditional access and MFA should a risky user sign-in detection come into the picture, right? So if a user has 10 failed attempts, let's trigger conditional access. Let's make sure we add that second layer of uh, protection and trigger multi-factor authentication for this user or reset the user's password, right? Communication is key. Communicating with your users is key as to how to better manage security and compliance with Copilot. Right now, by effectively managing identities and access, we can not only mitigate risks associated with overprivileged users, but also with unauthorized access within Copilot and within your corporate data. Um, Moving on, let's discuss how we can mitigate device risks with Endpoint Manager using Microsoft Intune and how this ties with Copilot. Now, Intune at the end of the day is a mobile device management tool, right? And it helps manage corporate and personal devices. Microsoft Intune supports multiple different platforms like Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS. Recently, Chrome OS has been added and of course, native integration with Windows devices. And the beautiful thing about Intune is that although it is an MDM tool, it is also an MAM tool, so a mobile application management tool, which means that not only can it lock down corporate devices, but it can also help lock down personal devices to control how corporate data is accessed, stored, and shared within those personal devices. Think of it almost as if forming a corporate bubble in your personal devices to stop from data being leaked outside of this corporate bubble. Now, why is this important with Copilot? Let's take a quick example here of basic DLP policies that Intune can help with through app protection policies. So say, for example, you guys have rolled out uh, um, Copilot for your users. Now users wanna use their personal devices to use Copilot to summarize emails or understand what we need to do as next steps or create a presentation or, or a word file like how the Shahab demoed for us. Now, DLP policies with Intune help you stop from copying data within your corporate bubble to outside of that corporate bubble. Let's say if a user um, has a coworker, they're very close with, they're friends, they have each other on WhatsApp, and now they may be working with PII information or specific sensitive projects, and now they're copying and pasting this data within WhatsApp, within Facebook Messenger, Instagram, right? That's a data leak. That's potentially a compliance regulation issue that could come up, right? Your data is being personal information or sensitive information is data being leaked outside of your corporate bubble and into applications like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger 
Um, and this could be true for Copilot as well, right? So if they try to, uh, let's say, prompt Copilot for something that's sensitive, the response that Copilot comes out with and they're sharing it with their coworkers on WhatsApp, that's potentially a data leak that we need to be careful of, right? So endpoint management helps in maintaining control over devices, ensuring your corporate data remains secure within personal as well as corporate devices. Now, at the end of the day, Intune is also an MDM tool, so it can also help you with uh, patch updates, OS updates, um, password management, right? Managing your passwords for your devices, as well as there's a new feature that Intune has recently rolled out, which is still in preview, is remoting in. So you would be able to remote in to manage devices should a user need help desk support, um, right? So that's something that's recently been introduced through Intune and a really cool new feature. A lot of fans have been uh, wanting to see a demo on that. So yeah, something that's recently been introduced. Now, next we will explore how to prevent overexposure of data using Microsoft Purview Information Protection. Now, Microsoft Purview is a data labeling and information protection tool which helps identify and classify sensitive documents across your Microsoft 365 data estate. Often we come across the question of how can I stop Copilot from outputting sensitive documents and files the user should not have access to? Or how can we stop from sensitive information being leaked to other AI applications, right? ChatGPT or Grammarly or presenter.ai? Right, with AI rolling out so fast across the globe, users are using whatever they have available over the internet to kind of make their work easier, right? Um, summarize certain things or share sensitive information on, from emails to summarize those emails. That's potentially a data leakage, right? Where Purview comes into the picture is you're able to kind of set uh, confidentiality containers per se. So I could set top secret, highly important data, medium importance, and public data. You can set then set DLP policies around each of these containers to understand how that data should be treated within your Office 365 environment, as well as outside your Office 365 environment. So, and once these documents have been classified, Copilot inherits sensitive labels and applies them to the output and the references when users are prompting Copilot for summarizations or presentations or Word documents, right? So quick example here, um, let's say the salary of the CEO is somewhere living in your SharePoint environment. A user could just ask Copilot for, hey, hey, can I see my salary or can I see what my paycheck was like, my previous paycheck? It may show them results for relevant results for other people's salaries, other people's paychecks, right? This is sensitive information. This should be in the top secret container where maybe only five people have access. It could be HR and maybe the person, the C-level person whose salary uh, it is, whose salary or paycheck it is, right? Then there is important information which maybe only xyz.com domain should have access to, right? So that's where this, uh, let's say this user shares this highly important data externally. So even though this person has shared this data externally, only xyz.com domain will be able to access that data, right? So nobody will have access to the data that the user has shared externally because this, those sensitivity labels live in the metadata of that document right? and they travel with the document. And that's the beautiful thing about it, right? So you could revoke access. You could just make sure that nobody else has access to that file because you can track everything that's going on with these sensitive files through auditing, right? So along with this and sensitive document auditing is what helps you manage and secure your data within and outside of your Microsoft 365 tenant. And also when users are prompting Copilot. So when Copilot gets prompted, it will make sure to output the result based on what that user is authorized to see. And so that's how Purview ties in really well to make sure that whatever your users are prompting Copilot for, um, it is only what is meant for the eyes of that user, and as well as if the sensitive documents are being leaked out, if people are transferring them to USBs, Dropbox, Google Docs, or emailing them to Gmail, sorry, emailing them to Gmail or Hotmail, then that could be restricted and stopped using Microsoft Purview DLP policies. Um, information protection is essentially crucial uh, to ensure sensitive data is handled correctly, and of course, 
securely within and outside your organization. It also helps in making sure that you guys are maintaining your compliance regulations. So if you're working with PII information or PHI or FedRAMP or NIST 800, right, we can make sure that we deploy Microsoft 365 technologies or workloads based on the compliance regulations that you guys are trying to follow. Lastly, I will be talking and uh, about how to discover and control the use of AI apps with Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. Now, Defender for Cloud Apps was called many different things. You guys may know it as maybe Shadow IP or a CASP solution or a Cloud App Security that right? has been renamed and rebranded a few times. But essentially, it is a Shadow IT solution, right? It provides complete visibility of every single app installed on managed devices and the consumption of those apps. It pretty much lives in the shadows of your devices to not only see the what apps are installed, but how much of that those apps are being consumed, right? Is your user uh, on Instagram or Facebook most of the time, or are they actually using Outlook and Teams, right? These are some of the things that Defender for Cloud Apps can pick up through managed devices or through Intune. Now, this also includes third-party AI applications, where sensitive information could potentially be leaked, right? So your users could be using GPT, could be using Grammarly, or any other AI application that could be downloaded onto the corporate device. Maybe you summarize a document, summarize emails, right? So Defender for Cloud Apps can go through all of your corporate devices, and you will be able to pick and choose whether or not you should block or approve the use of certain AI applications or third-party applications on those devices. So for example, if a user tries to download an AI app, which maybe does not fall under the FedRAM compliance, or which maybe does not fall under the NIST 800 compliance, right? So at that point, an alert could be generated letting the IT admin know that, hey, this user tried to download an app, and now this device is not FedRAM compliant anymore, right? You can take action at that point through Defender for Cloud Apps to restrict the use of those kind of applications and make sure that the device that the user is using remains compliant with certain regulations that you guys are trying to follow. Now, by controlling the use of AI apps, we can ensure that only approved and secure AI applications are used within the organization, minimizing potential security risks. So that's a little bit of an overview of what I like to call the four main pillars of security and compliance. And of course, effective security and compliance strategies for Copilot in Microsoft 365 involve robust identity and access management, endpoint management, information protection, and control over AI application usage. Implementing these measures ensures that your organizational data remains secure and compliant with relevant regulations. Um, next, I'll touch on a few of the co-pilot offerings that we have here in CDW, right? So if we start talking about all of the co-pilot offerings that we have, this entire slide will be, there will be no space on the slide, but I want to talk a little bit about more of what's hot in the market, what is being picked up by a lot of our clients, right? Readiness Workshop is a two-day planning workshop where we're kind of just introducing, getting into Copilot, understanding how to make the most effective use of it. Even when I started with Copilot, I had no idea where do I get started, right? And that's where you need that effective training to be able to understand what are some of the prompts that I should use, what are effective prompts that will help me be more efficient on my day-to-day -day tasks. Right? Governance assessment is a little introduction into how Purdue ties in with Copilot, how to manage user permissions, what the user should should and should not have access to, and what Copilot should and should not make visible to the user through the outputs and the references. At the end of the governance assessment, we come up with a technical action plan as to how we should be looking at deploying Microsoft Purview. Another one is end user training, right? This is also known as prompt engineering. So once your readiness workshop is done, your users are a little bit more handy with using Copilot, then the end user training comes into the picture with prompt engineering, where Shahab even mentioned this earlier, where it is very, you need to be extremely granular with Copilot to know exactly what you need to do, right? You, so like how he said, is there any call to action? No, like I would never think of that prompt uh, coming up or going through an actual document to think of that, write that prompt in, right? These are some of the things that we train your users on to make sure that they're more efficient with their prompts, right? We also have some adoption services and partner briefings around Copilot. 
Now, keep in mind, guys, we are a Microsoft Gold partner, which means that um, some of these offerings may be funded or semi-funded for you. So please do get in touch with us through your sales rep, right? Just ask to be connected to a digital workspace solutions architect, and we'd be happy to show you uh, some of the security and compliance offerings we have. And of course, whatever I presented on today, we have all of those offerings available. With that, I am going to pass it off uh, back to Brian Matthews. Thank you so much. All right, so just to close things off, it uh, looks like we'll be able to give everybody a couple minutes back in their day, but if there's any questions, the team and I can stay on uh, for a few more minutes. So thank you to uh, Micah from Microsoft. Thank you to Shoeb. Thank you to Shahab. Uh, hopefully you saw value in this. I, I think there was uh, a lot of great insight from the Microsoft perspective. I think we got to see Copilot uh, come to life in Shahab's demos, and then obviously Shahab, great job on the security uh, section there. So just to wrap up, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, if there's anything that CDW can do alongside Microsoft in order to help you along your co-pilot journey. We understand that everybody is at a different phase and a different point in their co-pilot journey. And obviously our services are designed to help you no matter where you are. Uh, I, I see the question from Augustin about will we be sharing the recording? We absolutely will, along with a co-pilot summary of the session to kind of, again, just show the technology off a little bit. Um, you know, when it comes to CDW, why are we so excited about co-pilot and, and why do we think we're a little bit different? What maybe makes us different than some of the other partners here. Uh, we are very excited. We're the reigning Microsoft Modern Workplace Partner of the Year, and Microsoft is CDW Canada's uh, top Partner of the Year award winner currently as well. So our, our, our partnership has great momentum and historic partnership momentum. Uh, we've got great security expertise. Shoeb showed a little bit of that off, but we've got 350 security resources internal at CDW. So whether it's related to Copilot or any other security challenge, we're well suited there. Uh, our Copilot journey started like everybody's last year uh, uh, when Copilot was launched by Microsoft, but CDW's AI background, uh, just like Microsoft and the industry's background goes goes way uh, you know back uh, prior to that. So we are a great partner with NVIDIA or their current partner of the year. Uh, we've got a great high performance compute or HPC practice and doing a lot of great uh, work with different research institutions uh, all over Canada. Um, and then lastly, there's a lot lot of investment that both Microsoft is making in CDW, that CDW Canada is investing in ourselves in order for us to build out our incremental capabilities. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon uh, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much.